Yeah. Okay. okay, so it seems like I'm recording from, from here. So hi everyone again. <laughs> so, so yeah, you want me to share my screen and go over some of the tips I have? Yes, of course. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I have this ready for you guys. Um, so I I'm not really familiar with this. Hopefully, can you see the presentation? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yes. Patricia, can I share this presentation with the students? Of course. Yeah, yeah. I'll send it to you. Like. Can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course. Of course. So perhaps you can share it. I mean, if, if you can explain the basic things about it, then perhaps you want to share it using the chat, this chat uh, button at the bottom. Where okay. it says chat, you can use it. Okay. I don't know which button you're talking about. The, the share one? Um, mm, at the very bottom, you have like mm, seguridad, participantes, chat. Can you, can you see there? Can, can you okay. see that? Hold, hold on, because no, I don't know what I did, and I removed like the whole. Okay, here it is. Uh, let me see. Sorry, it's just that it changed the window. So, uh, seguridad. Yeah, I see the seguridad. Yeah. So, what 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 am I supposed to do? Uh, no, after seguridad, you have participantes, and then Correct. you have chat. Yes. If you, you press want... chat. Okay. Oh, you, you want me to you share the. Share. Yes. Okay. I'll send you. I see what you're saying. Sorry. I'll send you through the chat the the the, the presentation. That's what you want. Yes, but uh, but this is yes, but go ahead and and tell us what what you okay. think that is more important. Sure. 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 Well, I had like a brief intro about what we do, but we can go around this later, or you just go, want me to go quickly as and as as we normally do. Whatever you you tell me. Um, why don't you explain what is the, the, the goal of your uh, company? I mean, yes. what, what do you do in general terms? Okay, let me just see if I can put this bigger so you guys, you can see it, right? It's just that I see it super tiny in my screen. I don't know if yes. you see it properly. Okay, okay, I'll leave it there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Architect US, the uh, program that I run and have been running now for five years. It's crazy how time goes by. But just so you know, I'm also a former student from 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 the escuela, from the Edson, uh, and I'm an architect. And I had the uh, great opportunity to practice overseas. Um, actually, pretty much all my experience has been international. For I mean, different reasons. But I did the residence in Paris. Then I worked in London. Uh, for uh, over two years with um, with Peter Cook, with Sir Peter Cook from Crab, so that was an amazing experience. Uh, probably you are all uh, aware of who he is. I mean, the, uh, the one of the co-founders of Archigram. And then I also worked for Herzog and de Meuron um, in Madrid, and then in New York for over five years. Uh, well, in, in HOK and, and another smaller boutique studio. So my, my experience led me to uh, come to the point where I decided that well, it was the recession time in, in, not in Spain, in the whole Europe and the world, in the industry, that I wanted to help uh, my counterparts to have the same opportunities that I had and, and kind of build the bridges between architectural international talents and companies in the US because the economy over there uh, was super strong and well, has been really strong uh, since then. Um, and so we started Architect US as uh, the first uh, specialized professional exchange program for architects. So we basically pair architects uh, that are either um, studying or they have been already graduated, they are professionals up to 35 years old, uh, with companies based in the US that are interested in hosting, you know, that talent from overseas. So we now have a community of, this is actually not updated, we are almost 8,000 right now. Um, uh, and, and we have 30 nationalities. Uh, so it's like a very rich community. And I, I'm always super proud to say that 
I think 37 or even 39 now, I don't know, uh, participants come from, from, from where we all come from, from the ETSAM. Um, as you know, guys, uh, we are very, very successful as soon as we put a foot in a, in a company because um, our system, our educational system is very um, rich. I mean, we are not only designers as it happens more in the rest of Europe. I mean, we have a lot of, uh, you know, real work uh, knowledge like construction structures, you know, uh, materials knowledge, all that. So that is also super important. I will highlight it in the in this slide with uh, the recommendations for your resume. But um, but yeah, that is like the uh, stamp that uh, kind of talks about us everywhere we go. And um, in terms of the companies we work with, uh, that that also has helped me to come up with. Mm, some conclusions about what are the main uh, applications that these companies re you know, required, uh, going back to the first topic we were discussing with, with Anna before. Like, you know, some small boutique studios are going to ask you for references uh, firsthand because they want to, you know, check who you have worked with before. But normally, you know, your portfolio is going to be the first uh, document that they're going to look at and then the resume and then the references but it varies from one company to the other as, as Anna was referring but um, just so you get an idea we work with um, as you said small boutique studios uh, like with four eight people like you know studios normally here in Spain but we also have uh, companies that are well known overseas like OMA, um, HOK or SOM, uh, Dior Escofidio we actually have, I'm so happy, I didn't tell you this, Anna, but we signed up last year um, to be the, well, to, to help Arkea, the Arkea scholarship from Fundacion Arkea, uh, to have their first two scholarships across the ocean. So we are, um, we, we, we was in the summertime, we gave the first two scholarships uh, for the US and it's gonna be one guy from, from the ETSAM I think he's going to the other Scofidio and in New York, and the other one is going to OMA also in New York. So um, that is, I guess, the best thing out of this crazy year for us. Um, but as I mentioned, in, in the event that you are interested in, in knowing if you can participate, uh, you can do it as a student or as a already graduated. And uh, we work across the entire US, um, mainly this is, was supposed to be, this meant to be a gift. I don't know if it, I don't know why it's not working. Anyway, in the main capitals, New York, San Francisco, LA and everywhere. Um, and it's as simple as just registering in our website, uh, 3w-architect-us.com in uh, one of the two programs that we have. Uh, normally the most successful one is the job plus year one because for obvious reasons, we not only sponsor your visa and help you to get to the US in terms of immigration. But first of all, which is the most important and or difficult thing to, to get is to get a job. So, uh, you know, we assist you finding that job opportunity and then taking care of all the documentation. And so going, I was a little bit fast because I really want to focus on, on the main topic and the most important and I guess thing for you guys, uh, because I don't know how many of you are already thinking about, okay, you know, how it's gonna look like the job hunting or, you know, um, the, real, the real world of an architect once I finish school. Probably you are not there yet, but you will get there. So this is the first starting point for you to start thinking about, okay, how I wanna showcase uh, my work, how I want to present myself to a company, uh, what what sort of architect I, I, I want to uh, become and, and how to, you know, accomplish my goals in, in that in that sense, career-wise. career, career wise. So there are like four documents uh, that I want to just go over. Uh, we already talked about the cover letter. Some people don't really know whether the cover letter is like a um, a series of like like a personal statement where you just um, use narrative to talk about yourself and it's more like a real letter so like a single document where you kind of explain what you know who you are as an architect as i said but maybe you can start from the very beginning like your background 
you know, when and how you decided to become an architect, you know, what are your main strengths, uh, your, your main interests, like why you are actually um, absolutely interested in working with that particular company. That's actually a very, very important thing. Make it personalized. I mean, we are in a moment that everything seems to go um, towards optimization, which is great. You know, you can have like, a, like the, the general structure of the cover letter, the same for every company, but always make sure that, you know, you add even a single paragraph or like a few sentences about the company, about why you want to work for them. Otherwise, you know, if they get to read your cover letter, you can totally tell, okay, this is the same one for every, every company. So if you're not, uh, if you're not making an effort to kind of uh, show that you care about their company, they're not going to make the effort to know more about you, right? So it's like a, not a win-win, but a real, okay, I show you my interest, then I expect the same way back, right? So in that single document, as I said, you have to mention your background, skills, and experience in a more narrative way than uh, what you will be doing in, in, in your resume. And um, it also gives uh, detailed information of, uh, you know, why you qualify for the job. That's also very important. So, uh, and this is a very common mistake that people just send the same documents, same application documents everywhere. And it sounds obvious, but at the same time, it happens every single day. Not, not even, not, not speaking about um, mistakes where you just uh, keep the wrong company name, that that is obviously automatically, uh, okay, ciao. Uh, but not even that, like referring uh, the uh, job description that is completely different. So you have to <clears throat> be careful about that. And what we always recommend is to have like a Google sheet, probably a Google sheet or a, next, a spreadsheet where you have everything tracked so you don't make those mistakes. Like, you know, uh, what I'm gonna say for this company, what is the job description? So you, you, you make sure that you don't mix up information. Um, and a PDF in an A4 format or letter size will be uh, more than enough depending on where you're applying to. And what to include, I think I already kind of mentioned this, but it will be like a, a, a real letter kind of uh, format. So a header with the company information, um, you know, you just introduce yourself in a very polite way. So you do the salutation like dear, Mr. Whatever. Um, you introduce your, yourself, but instead of jumping directly into who you are, um, you know, you highlight the reason why, you know, you're applying for that particular or specific position. And also, if you have um, someone who referred you to this, to this uh, position, to this company, also mention it, you know, it will, it will be a plus for you, obviously, you, 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 you will be already referred by someone. And then in the body, uh, well, then you explain what, what I said, why you qualify, why your main strengths, uh, what you think are the most interesting skills for the specific job position that you have, you know, what, 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 why you're gonna be a great contribution, basically. And um, uh, well, the closing is pretty much the same, is why you, have to offer the, the, you know, the employer and uh, just sign in. So a few recommendations is that if you're submitting a cover letter along with your resume is that don't make them look the same. You know, uh, as, as we mentioned, the cover letter needs to speak a little bit more about who you are instead of just listing things, you know, uh, that, that is what you do in, in the resume. Um, the grammar check, uh, typos and so on, and um, try to avoid a lot of personal information. This is very different depending on where you're applying to at the same time. Um, you know, for instance, I, I think I mentioned this later on, but in the US, they don't, they, they, they don't accept resumes with, uh, with a picture, no? With a with picture, picture ID. With a photo, yeah. So, and, and, you know, by contrary, in Spain, you have to add it. So it really depends. So probably one good tip is that you do some research in that regard 
for the specific country you're applying to if you are doing it internationally. Um, and then I will, I will recommend do not get into salary, uh, you know, unless they're requesting uh, the salary requirements you have, because, you know, it's better that you kind of um, talk about these tricky aspects once you have the interview face to face. So try to avoid it. Um, in terms of the resume, uh, it's, it's, it's similar in the sense of highlighting your academic background and professional experience, if you have any, but in a more almost bullet points kind of way, you know, uh, you can always include a little, a brief uh, description or explanation about each one, but normally it should be in one page two pages maximum. I mean, we, we tend to have like five pages uh, and we mix up everything there. Like we include the reference letters. So try to keep it simple. I always think that you only have one shot. Like the person who is reviewing your applications is reviewing your application plus hundred more. And they're already looking about the coffee break and you know that they want to leave on time. So if they see your application like, oh my gosh, this is one of those that is going to take me 15 minutes, they're going to just pass, you know? So just think about, it's, it's like almost like when you pitch yourself, you know, somewhere. You have to use the uh, enough amount of words and enough amount of information that is going to describe you as a rounded professional but at the same time, yeah, keep it in mind that it has to be straight to the point and, and, and you know, fast. That is especially for the U.S. You know, they are very, they're very pragmatic. They, they just don't mess around and don't spend too much time. Um, so again, single document, one, two pages maximum. Um, and oh, I think I have here, yeah, what's into it. Well, your contact information, obviously, um, I will always recommend when you're talking about your academic background, you start with contact information, just briefly academic um, background, especially if you are still at, you know, uh, entry level or student level, you know, that is your main information right now. Maybe in 10 years time, you know, the academic um, reference, it, it kind of reduces uh, its appearance in the CV because obviously the professional experience is what it, gains more importance. But for now, at the level that you are, that is very important. Where you study, how many years it took you to accomplish it, and you know, the name of, of, the, uh, of the institution. Then you include the professional experience. This is important as well because uh, when we deal with the students, in many cases, they, they tend to think that that internship that they did for a month, it doesn't really count because it was too short. And, no, it does count, you know, anything that you have done, even helping a professor with... Uh, Patricia, Patricia, may I interrupt you for a second? Sure. As um, most of my students um, have uh, working experience, uh, but not in, um, in the, the architecture field. I mean, so, some, of them, some of them do, but some others don't. I... I okay advise them to include the working experience that they have all even if it's not related to architecture but always emphasizing always putting an emphasis on what they learn that could be um of interest in a, a different a completely different type of company because for instance if you were working in um i don't know in um in in sara for instance no as a sales manager Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you were in charge of a group of people, or you have to meet, meet with difficult, cl difficult clients, or you have to, I mean, you have to think of those, um, those uh, skills you learn while developing your work there, even if it's not related to architecture. Would you, would you tell them the same? Yes, definitely, definitely. Actually, there's, uh, I think, I didn't include it here, but that's actually a really good point. I think, yeah, I have it. I have it at the very end, like to highlight relevant organizations, volunteer groups, or any other type of experience that you have, yes. because that also talks about who you are. Yes, and yes. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you assisted us, as Anna mentioned, uh, to a sales manager in Tara, well, that speaks about your organization skills, right? Because probably you have been, I don't know, dealing with the, the, the schedule of deliveries or, I don't know, some sort of organization uh, and managing skills. Well, that counts. I mean, maybe you haven't worked uh, leading a group of architects yet because you are you know just starting your career but you had that experience that that definitely has to has to be included even if you have been i don't know volunteering in a, a what's the word um you know these kids that goes to the campsite during the summer um oh my god i forgot the name um I, I don't remember well. Basically, like uh, mm -hmm. taking care of. Uh, I don't know. Scouts. Yeah, scouts. Yeah, boy scouts. scouts. <laughs> that also talks about you know responsibility, commitment. I mean, so many great skills that you probably have because you were interested in in doing that during your spare time, right? During your summer time. So that 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 needs to be included. Yeah, definitely. So um, I hope that I answer uh, the question. So, in terms of Professional, well, uh, you, you can see the list, but I'll go into details uh, into, into each one. So professional experience, any software that you are uh, familiar with, um, specifying at what level, you know, of proficiency you are, even if it's just starter, well, you know the interface, kind of, you're familiar with it, you let them know. And if you are really proficient with Rhino, then you let them know as well, right? Um, then if you have any academic experience and references. And what I, what I mentioned already, do not include a profile photo or now it becomes, it seems that it's quite like a new trend to include like a sketch of yourself. That, that is very, very, very academic and, and it doesn't look very professional. And again, um, they don't wanna know anything about you as a person, you know, because they, they, they don't wanna uh, judge and ha be biased basically because of that. So uh, Patricia, Patricia, uh, they, they, they don't want you to include your age either. Do, you, do they? Age. That's true. That's true. I mean, if you are at an entry level, probably you won't say your age, but you will say I'm on my second years of bachelor's. So they, they need to know through the information that you're given you know, how, know, know your age, but how, how, where you are in your professional career, let's say. So don't, don't say I was born on, I was going to say 1980 something. That's not, that doesn't apply to you guys. You're already over the, the 2000s. Um, but don't, don't include that. You know, it doesn't add anything and it might discard you because again, it's personal information. So yeah, just let them guess. Uh, through the information that you're providing. And so in terms of professional experience, I would say just to keep it short, like the name of the company, what position you held there and, and the time. If it's months, three months. If it's years, you know, the time you work there. Don't, don't uh, underestimate, you know, the time that you work for someone. As I said, you know, you're starting your professional career. So it counts and, and so it's, it's important. Uh, in terms of the academic background or experience, just the name of the university institution, the degree, if you already hold it or when is the expected graduation date and um, the software skills. But as I said, um, now I think that it's very common to see that you, you design like uh, some sort of legend, which is very nice in a graphic way. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, but it's, it's easy to also mention, you know, it helps to mention at what level you are, you know, with some sort of ranking or wording, you know, I'm four out of five profession in this uh, software or, you know, just saying I am intermediate user, I'm early, early learner or whatever, something like that. And then the references are also very important. Uh, if you don't have, if you haven't got any professional experience, you can always reach out to your teachers. I remember, Anna, you probably don't remember, but I remember asking you for a reference letter many years ago. Did, did I? Did, did I answer? 
you always answer you always uh, you, uh, uh, you always you no, always because I remember, you know because i remember that i have one a uh, 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 professor at the university when i when i was studying i don't know because i have been studying different different things in my life and and, and i asked him for a reference letter and he forgot and he yeah. forgot that's true. That's, that's very true. I mean, if you are if you are dealing with, I don't want to be. I don't want to be like that. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's it's very simple. Uh, that especially now that everything is remote, the number. I don't know if this has happened to you, but the number of e incoming emails, and calls, and WhatsApps have multiplied by I don't know four. Like, uh, so it's crazy. it's super simple that you read something, and even though you wanna you know help or uh jump into that you know you just forget because there's another call or whatever so mm, that actually gives me the opportunity to give you another recommendation so if you're dealing with someone that is very busy uh you can always in a very polite way suggest um or even send them right away like uh, you reach out to your professor, let's say, and you tell them why you need the reference letter and how and why is that important that they help you. And as you understand that they might be very busy, you have already drafted like, you know, the, the type yes. of uh, reference letter that you would need. So it's almost, in, it's, it's very difficult that they're going to say no, you know, you already did the job for them, kind of. I try not to describe yourself as the next Norman Foster, unless you, you, you really are. <laughs> so be honest, be honest. Uh, yes. and, and, I, ha I, have, I have also received this type of letters when the, the person was going to be the, the next Norman Foster. <laughs> yes. so, so try to keep it simple, realistic, honest, yeah. and, and just ask them for, you know, obviously review it, amend it if needed, and sign it. And normally, they, you know, they, they will do it for you and also another recommendation uh, that i will give is that um try to get the reference letter when you still have the relationship with the person even if you don't need it at that particular moment because you know uh, you never know maybe in three years time you want to apply for a master's or you want to get the, that job and this person has moved or left the company or whatever and so be clever about that and plan ahead and, and and get the reference letter before you leave you know the uh the class the work the job or, or or whatever that's that's also something important and always try to include their their contact info in the event you know the company wants to reach out to be honest when i work in london and i work also in spain no one had used my reference, but in the U.S., they check. They, they, they. It's, it's yeah. really common that, you know, they they just send a quick email because they receive those requests as well from, you know, about their former employees. So, uh, it's it's very common. So again, be honest um, and and share the the, the information. Um, so this is an example that a friend of mine shared with me. Uh, she's American. Uh, and as you can see, it has nothing to do with the type of resumes I think that we prepare here. I mean, we are really, um, what's the word, uh, plastic or graphic, like full of colors and a lot of information, but you have to keep it simple. I mean, think it, think that the portfolio will be the right document for you to show off with your graphic skills if you want. But the resume, resumes are, needs to be like very, clear and so the person if is busy they can just scan it and find the information that they're looking for fast so this is kind of a boring cv but you know is is it gives all the information that you need to have so education i don't know if you can see it um let me see if i can so well oops sorry oh okay this is going crazy okay now I think I, you can see it somehow. Yeah, so it has the, the information that I was telling you. Everything has been like organized in kind of sections, education, experience, you know, and, and it gives the name of the studio, what was the level you see, intern, uh, drafter, whatever. And then it explains a little bit of your real 
um, duties you, what you actually did and very 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 important the dates the dates the range of time that you have been working at that particular company um, okay and yeah she put it well here are the references for the people uh, the other document that I don't see it that often but it's also required from some companies especially when they give you like uh, was a limit of um, you know the size of a, of of, of, a, of a document like five megabytes. It's almost impossible that someone coming from the Edsam that all our boards and uh, you know are like full of information with all these tiny texts and diagrams and so on. Very beautiful, um, you know, pages or uh, of of your projects can be. Re reduce into a uh, five, mm, you know, megabytes file. So it's a very, it's, it's an exercise of um, selection, I guess, and, and making sure that, again, uh, you're just showing the most uh, incredible work that you have produced. And in the work sample, that is, that applies to both work samples and portfolio. Uh, here, in, in, in Spain, we are not used to have work samples, but just so you have an idea of what it is. You can hear me, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, oh, because, because all yes. the time there we was- are, We are really silent, but- oh, No, 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 it's good. <laughs> well, you can interrupt me. I have the, the chat open. So if you have any questions or, or wait until the end, whatever, whatever you feel. You said that there was like some noise and all of a sudden there was like nothing. Okay, great. So the work sample, as I said, is not very common here. So we are not familiar with what exactly it is. This is almost like a summary of your portfolio. So you will pick only like, I don't know, three, five pages, and you just show like the main projects, right? So this is almost like a, yeah, like a brief description of your full portfolio. And, and uh, you should show like the best image, the best drawing of the, uh, each of the project. Um, Normally, yeah, I said here, check special instructions at company career section because that is also something that uh, is funny. Many companies get super mm, nervous about because they provide specific instructions as a, and as we tend to go fast and don't read things, to just submit whatever you want. That is gonna discard you right away, you know, because is telling them that you don't you are not detail oriented that you don't really follow instructions and that's important for an employer too so so excuse me so make sure that you read what they're asking you uh and what you can include in a work sample well uh, a rendering a drawings model photos uh sketches pretty much all what you will be including in a portfolio but again thinking that you're gonna describe a project in one single sheet. So you have to make be, I mean, make sure that you select the best, the best out of the best what you have. Uh, again, do not include a photo or a sketch of yourself again. <laughs> and for instance, this is um, I mean, it's not the most interesting or appealing project, but it's a you know good way of uh, showcasing what a work sample it is. It's just the name of the company. I mean, sorry, the name of the project, probably the location of it, and then a brief, brief, brief presentation of what, it, uh, introduction of what the project was. You know, uh, if it was a personal work, if it was a competition, if it was uh, a commission in collaboration with someone, if it was an internship project, whatever it is. And in this particular case, you, you know, the person used only like um, uh, renderings, well, there's a section as well in the diagram. But um, this is another one. To be honest, for me, this is over. Patricia, may, I, may I interrupt you? Sure, sure, sure. Um, when presenting this, when preparing this uh, sample work, um, how much do they have to um, write about it? I mean, do they expect like a long des description in writing? No, 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 no. Uh, I, I not say, at all. No, that's not all. all. No, it's very graphic. So. So the uh, work sample is only a matter of drawings or images and photo montages and I mean graphic things. The only text that you will be using is to showcase 
what the project it is, meaning like if it was an academic project or if it was working under the supervision of a specific studio company, uh, what was your involvement, maybe the size of the project, like very key facts to help them understand the scope of the project, but that's all, that's all. Um, yeah, here they have, I don't know if you can see it, the, yeah, is the name of the project, um, work related, you know, what, what sort of uh, software they use to produce this information, you know, this documentation. Uh, obviously, if, if there's some sort of important information that you want to highlight, if it was a, a, an award mentioned in it, but just key information, key information text, they're going to just look at the actual work sample. Uh, here, as you can see, there are only like three elements, you know, uh, uh, um, axonomeric uh, and the detail in a, in a photo montage. So you just pick, you know, the best documents that you want to use to to explain your project. And then the portfolio is like the, the gem, you know, it's like the most important document that you have to make sure is really, really well executed. Um, and Again, we, we tend to, um, we, we have a selection committee that runs, um, you know, weekly. So we, we receive like, I don't know, hundreds of documents, uh, portfolios, I mean, and, and we have to go over them and review them to make sure that they meet our um, standards in order to accept the person into the pool of, of candidates that we have at Architect US. And it's so funny because it's very rare to get a portfolio with 15 pages. Normally we get portfolios with 60 pages, a lot of separator Y pages. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's just like people go around mm, their work in a very poetic way, I guess. And again, you have to think that this person is gonna be almost like if they were in the uh, uh, hairdresser room, just looking at, uh, flicking, uh, flicking through a, a newspaper and they will just stop at that great image that got their attention. So you have to be clever and avoid white pages, separator pages, uh, just like a single page with a title. No, go straight to the point, make it look beautiful for sure, but go straight to the point because if your real work is start on page number nine because you have an index, well, all these uh, kind of intro uh, pages, they, they probably won't pay the attention that you know you, you, you required for your documents. And yeah, remember less is more. So uh, we always recommend the landscape format because you know it gives you more freedom to combine elements. So if you have sections like long sections, and you want to also include like a very uh, large detail, it will give you more freedom that the portrait, that the portrait, keep it for the resume references and, and landscape for the portfolio. That's our recommendation. Uh, in terms of the project data, um, it's pretty similar to what uh, I already described for the uh, work sample but maybe a little bit more elaborated. So you, the, the key information is that they know what exactly you did, because obviously, you know, it's, it's very difficult that you have uh, designed, built, executed a, a project, right? I mean, you have done that under the umbrella of a larger company. So you have to let them know that it was obviously while you were working for this company, this person, and what you did, you know, what was the, um, the functions or duties that you, you had. So I was responsible for the circulation diagrams or, you know, I did all the uh, 3D modeling and renderings and, you know, the level, the level of involvement that you had and what softwares you use, because that also is, you know, talks about, you know, your, your, um, uh, computer skills and, and and a brief project description. What something that helps in that regard is giving either the budget or the size of it, because it's not the same to have been working in a, I don't know, the refurbishment of a hotel entry than uh, I don't know the uh, development of uh, two hundred dwellings or housing. You know, it, it, it tells a little bit more. 
uh, about what you, the, the type of project you have been involved with. The scale, obviously, and the location. Uh, and this is, as I said, is the same thing that you can use for uh, uh, work sample. So pretty much any, any graphic document that you have developed, it could be good, but be selective. If you're, I don't know, for one project, you had like an amazing physical model well, use the physical model photos. You are not forced to use a rendering always if you are not really good, you know, at rendering that particular project. Don't 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 damage your image, you know. If if you're not good in something, just don't show it. Uh, or reinforce what you are great at, basically. Um, one thing that I also recommend is that it's very common that um, you guys produce like an online portfolio when you are still in the in school. That is great for you to start with, but that is not something a company is going to look at. Even websites, you know, we get a lot of, you know, animated websites that, you know, uh, the applicant is expecting that the, um, that the uh, HR manager is going to navigate forget about that they, 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 they just they want to spend the time doing it so it's great you can if you have it you can include it for more about my work please visit my website or you know my you know online portfolio whatever uh, but you have to give what they're looking for at that moment you're not gonna have you know a, a lot of time to 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 go around it um, and then in terms of um, uh, the application, the keys for a perfect application, this is just a summary. As I said, do not include a profile photo or, or uh, a sketch of yourself in any of the documents. Uh, try to create something that is very, that shows you as a very versatile um, architect. So you can do a master planning, but you can also do a detail and you can do a diagram and, you know, uh, try to, 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 show, to prove yourself in that regard. Um, always use the most powerful images. It's very, very common to see a page where you have six images. Are, are, are the six images, first of all, needed to explain your project? And secondly, uh, are they all that great? You know, uh, just show the, the best ones, the best shots. And don't um, overcrowd the page because you, then you're asking the reviewer to use their eye to select what to look at. You just want them to look at what you want them to look, you know, so be selective. Uh, so do not saturate pages. Um, also the scale, this is very important. In, in school or in competitions, it's very common that we use those little diagrams or like very small scale for things because it makes the overall layout super beautiful. And it's true, but that is for that particular context, you know, a competition or like a presentation in, in school. But again, you're trying to compete with others to get the job, right? So make, make, make sheets readable, make them uh, easy to understand at one, at the first side. Don't, don't, don't pretend that they zoom in and they navigate and, you know, make it easy, basically. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I, another thing is that I won't recommend to include a lot of text because they won't read it, you know. Again, there will be just passing pages waiting to see what you have to offer in terms of, oh, look at this. This is a very interesting uh, section or this is a great diagram or look at this rendering. This guy is really good, you know, with 3D modeling. So, so um, make sure that you pick the right the right things and um one thing that i recommend always to people coming from spain is always include detailing drawings we have many you know and and that sets you apart that will make you stand out from the crowd because in many other uh universities they they don't have that background you know they, they don't have all that technical knowledge that you do and that's going to help your application for sure and I think that's it. I, I put together a few examples of um, not the best practice. So for instance, in this one, as you can see, if this is the A3 in, in uh, landscape, the person already, the only thing that they did, they plug 
directly from their um, PFC is no longer a PFC, right? Like the thesis project that you have at the master habilitante directly in the scene in the sheet. Well, that's that's not that's not what you're supposed to do. You will have to extract, you know, the information from those sheets that you have in your thesis project and do a new layout, right? Uh, otherwise, they, they won't see any detail. They, they, it's, it's difficult to understand anything here, even though it looks like it's super interesting. You cannot really tell. Uh, this one, for instance, is super crowded. It has sections. It has urban planning. It has elevations, diagrams. Uh, you know, for Tom text. It's like okay, what, what should I be looking at? And in, if you, it's almost like the same exercise that you do when you are uh, pinning up your work in a classroom, that you are like two meters from the wall. And if you close a little bit your eyes, you have to see where your eye goes. Here, obviously it goes to the main picture, right? The big one the, at, the, at the bottom left, bottom, no, bottom left corner, because it's the one that is easy to understand. So you are focusing all the attention there. But imagine if I'm asking you to, to say, okay, when you think about those three little images right above, you know, the uh, the main the main rendering, it's difficult to to even understand what you're trying to. It's too much basically. So, uh, if you need more pages, okay, do it. Um, so in here, this is a good example. There's only one element, only one, but it's a great section, right? It is full of detail. It gives um technical aspects uh, you can you know see the circulation i mean it's beautifully drawn don't try to don't don't try to say oh my god but there's a lot of you know white space here uh, or i'm only talking about this section what about oh you can use another sheet for that right and and, and make sure that this is beautifully showcased uh here there are more elements but they they kind of they're kind of part of the same kind of language, right? So it's a very technical uh, sheet and, and they're showing like a 3D uh, rendering to explain all these uh, little details. So it helps the understanding and it doesn't look overcrowded. Same here, you have like a, a section with a 3D model uh, above, so it helps. And I think that's it. I mean, I don't know if you want me to go over any particular aspects, but I will be more than happy to to answer any questions if you have any. Uh, Patricia, I know that, that you're busy. I don't know if you, yeah. I, I, mean, yeah. I, feel, guilt, I feel guilty because I wanted to be done with uh, a number of things uh, today, just okay. in case. Sure. And, um, and, and do you have time? for perhaps uh, some questions? Sure, sure, sure. I'm thinking, do, do you? Okay, yeah. so... Um, uh, I'm gonna just you type you questions? here the, um, the uh, you know, the um, website and in and, and, and our uh, forum. So if you, wanna, if you want us to send you the, you know, the presentation and everything, please make sure to leave your name and an email and we will send it to you. So I'm gonna type here that, but please uh, let me know. What, 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 what are your questions? Okay, so you are going to share your, your email address or I don't know, something like that, yes. so that they can, they can write to sure. you? Okay. Of I'm gonna just do it here. Okay, fine. If, yeah. if you have any question for, for Patricia, this is the moment now. Don't be shy and ask her. Uh, she has quite a lot of experience, as you have seen. And, um, and I don't know if uh, any of you is thinking of uh, working experience in the USA, but it is really, really interesting, okay? Yeah, I have some, well, one question. Uh, thank you, Patricia, for your tips and your examples. And also, what I wanted to ask is, uh, do you really think it's a good idea to ask for a job or work in our last year of architecture here in Spain um, or to apply to your website? Like how it is really working for us? Okay, I see, I see your point. Basically, you're, you're trying to see if it's too early because you are still um, starting, right? That's, that's what you mean? 
Yeah, well, I'm in the, my fifth year. Oh. So um, I don't know if it's good to ask uh, maybe to start in January till July, for example, because I really want to go abroad, but I, I don't know. Okay. So, yeah, so the timeline for, um, you know, applying for the visa and getting the job right now is a little bit uncertain because of the um, current circumstances with the COVID and so on. But thank God that uh, there's been a recent change in the uh, administration, U.S. administration. So uh, Biden, who won Trump recently, uh, is already working on revoking all the, um, yeah, all what he did in terms of uh, immigration. So the visas have been resumed because they have been banned for half of this year, which is has been really bad. Um, but then there's still a travel ban, right? So it's difficult to move around until the end of the year, but it's almost, it's almost there. So the travel ban so far is in place until December 31st. But in terms of when you should be applying, you can register at any time, you know, it's free. Uh, and, and we always recommend you to start working on your materials because once you register, uh, you will get, I just actually um, type the registration form where you can leave your information and we will send you uh, all this. Um, basically you get program information, next steps, what sort of documents you are required, and also access to your personal kind of profile where you upload your resume and portfolio. And so even if you're not planning to move right away, you know, you will have a program advisor assigned to you that will help you to make sure that you have your applications, documents, portfolio and resume ready for whenever you are ready to move abroad. Mm -hmm. So you can apply at any time. And in terms of how long it takes, uh, the visa process is, is really fast. It only takes 30 days from the moment we have um, a company offer, right? Uh, then then uh, it might be a little bit longer, um, you know, when, when the travel ban is removed, just because I guess it will take a little bit of time to get all the protocols in place, but normally it's only 30 days. And then in terms of looking, I mean, finding um, the job opportunity, that's difficult to say because you also play an important role there. So when you are part of our uh, pool of talents, it's not that we send you, uh, you know, an offer and you have to accept it. No, you obviously have to, you know, you can say, well, I'm not actually really interested in moving to LA or this type of, of company is really big. I'm looking for something more small, I don't know, or specifically in this particular field. So you might be uh, letting go a few opportunities. So it will depend also on how picky you are, basically that's what I'm trying to say. But the, the average normally is three months or something like that. Okay, and also we will work as interns, but I don't really difference between a real job and an intern, uh, maybe in the salary or um, uh, that's experience. Or... Yeah. That's a good question because uh, that's um, a common concern for even people that have finished a master's. They, they will be seen as interns, but only per the immigration title. So the visa, the type of visa that we provide is, it falls into either an intern category or trainee category. But it, that doesn't have to be, I mean, that has nothing to do with your title at the company. So just, just to give you an, an example, someone who has just finished a PhD, so maybe they have eight years of experience or whatever, if they submit the visa application at that particular moment, just because they just finished within a year, the, the, the title is intern, but just for the immigration. At the company, they're gonna treat you at the level where you are in your career. So if this is your first job, yes, you will be an intern level or junior level. It depends. I mean, each company has their different job title set up, but, um, but you will be get, you know, you will get paid uh, in the US. Uh, well, I don't know, there are very small companies that they accept or they get unpaid interns, but all the people that we send, I mean, this is mandatory per State Department, um, you will get paid uh, and stipend or salary commensurate with what you've done. 
Okay, thank you very much. Sure. My pleasure. I have a few questions too. Sure. Um, well, it is possible if I ask you in Spanish because I don't know the terms of some words, so maybe it's easier. Well, um, if Anna allows you to do that, I'm yes, okay. Yes. Go ahead. Eh, gracias. Es, yo quería preguntar, ¿tenemos que homologar el título al, lleg al llegar a Estados Unidos? No. Eh, no. Muy buena pregunta. Eh, a ver, esto es algo que también siempre genera mucha, mucha confusión y he dado algunas charlas en la escuela porque, no sé si lo sabéis, eh, que es algo que, es, que deberían de explicaros muy, muy bien desde el principio, la escuela es una de las, creo que son solo tres universidades de, de España que tienen eh, lo que se llama el Substantial Equivalency, que otorga a la NAP, que es como, no sé cómo traducirlo, pero bueno, como la institución que de alguna manera regula eh, los planes de estudios que son homologados con el proceso de licenciatura en Estados Unidos, que no tiene nada que ver con, con el que tenemos en España. ¿Vale? Ellos terminan los estudios y luego tienen que acumular una serie de horas de, de experiencia profesional y luego tienen que hacer una serie de exámenes eh, para recibir lo que es el título. Entonces, es muy difícil encontrar las equivalencias, por eso la NAP se encarga de establecer el, equivalen el Substantial Equivalency eh, no solo con universidades extra, eh, internacionales, sino también con algunas americanas que no, que, pues, no cumplen, por ejemplo, con, con esos criterios y no tienen ese sustancia de equivalencia. Entonces, en el caso de la escuela, vosotros ya vais a contar con eso aprobado. Es decir, no vais a tener que pasar por el proceso de que convaliden eh, el plan de estudios. Pero eso no quiere decir que ya de forma inmediata vayáis a, tener, eh, vayáis a estar licenciados en Estados Unidos. No, tendréis que pasar por el resto de de pasos que pasan los mismos americanos, que como os he dicho es acumular horas de experiencia, que para eso os puede servir mucho el, nuestro programa, eh, para acumular eh, parte de las horas de experiencia que requieren. Eh, yo cuando lo hice, porque yo pasé por ahí, eh, pedían un montonazo, eran como, no sé, cinco mil y pico, pero claro, yo estuve cinco años y, y no tuve problema. Pero con el año, año y medio que os podéis ir con el J1, pues acumularíais, no sé, un 70% a lo mejor. Eh, pero bueno, ya contáis con ello. Y luego, aparte de las horas de experiencia, tendríais que conseguir eh, hacer, hacer unos exámenes. Pero todo esto es un follón mmm, que no me quiero meter en mucho detalle porque eh, da para una clase en sí misma. Entonces, respondiendo a tu pregunta concreta, no necesitas para nada eh, hacer una homologación de título ni tampoco licenciarte en Estados Unidos para conseguir trabajar. Hay muchísimos americanos que no han hecho estos pasos que os he comentado y están trabajando. Es verdad que para poder firmar un proyecto, pues necesitas estar licenciada, o sea, no es la licenciada, es tener la licencia, es que es un poco, es un matiz distinto. Licenciado estás una vez que terminas la carrera, pero no tienes la licencia de arquitecto. En España eso va ligado a la vez, una vez que terminas, eres arquitecto, ¿no? Y te puedes colegiar y visar. En Estados Unidos no. En Estados Unidos tienes que, lo que les digo, ganar experiencia profesional y luego pasar unos exámenes. Pero es que en vuestro caso me extrañaría mucho que me dijerais, oye, que tengo un cliente americano que quiere que le haga una casa. Pues en ese caso, incluso si fuera el caso, pues os podéis encontrar a algún colaborador allí que firmara por vosotros. Esperamos que para nada necesitáis eh, homologación para poder... Vale. Y otra cosa, ¿es necesario el máster habilitante? ¿O podemos simplemente ir con el grado? Podéis ir con el grado. Es que ellos, ya os digo, tienen un sistema completamente distinto. O sea, no van a entender lo que es el grado, lo que es el máster. O sea, hay una ligera equivalencia. El, 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 el grado sería el bachelor's para, ello, para ellos y el máster habilitante como el master's degree. Pero tampoco es exactamente lo mismo. Como sabéis, esperamos, no, no, no tenéis ningún problema. Con un grado es... Ajá. Déjame, déjame hacer un par de, de comentarios acerca de lo que acabáis de decir. Eh, por eso, Patricia, y supongo que también estás de acuerdo conmigo, yo les digo a, yo les digo a los alumnos que no pongan eh, eso de graduado en fundamentos de la arquitectura, sino que pongan a uh, degree in architecture. Porque si tú vas por ahí diciendo fundamentos de la arquitectura, pueden preguntarse, ¿pero eso qué es? Sí, Entonces, sí. Forget about, forget about that. I mean, you're, you have a degree in architecture, ¿vale? Eso en primer lugar. Eh, eso, eh, tratar de pensar de una manera... Mm, 
internacional, internacional, en el sentido de tratar de, de encontrar las equivalencias, ¿no? No, no, no las cosas particulares que pueden hacer vuestro currículum incomprensible en otros, en otros países. Segunda cosa que quiero comentar, eh, hace años eh, Kenneth Thornton, supongo que os, que os sonará, visitó la escuela y en la escuela hubo una gran, gran exposición de maquetas, de materiales, de currículum, de libros que los profesores habíamos um, producido en, en esos últimos años para presentarlo y conseguir la primera, equival o sea, la primera um, uh, acreditación, como, como esto que tú estabas comentando del NAP, ¿no? Eh, conseguir sí. esta acreditación. Afortunadamente, la escuela hizo un enorme esfuerzo y consiguió esa acreditación. ¿Eh? Lo que se estaba diciendo, Patricia, es que somos una de las pocas escuelas españolas de arquitectura que cuenta con la, la acreditación, que hace que no necesitéis homologar vuestros títulos. Mucho me, bueno, mucho me temo. Vamos a ver. Acabamos de mandar material y nuestros currículum y otras cosas que nos han solicitado desde, la, desde el, um, a la, um, uh, el departamento de calidad de la escuela porque nos van a evaluar de nuevo. Claro. Entonces, eh, tenemos todas nuestras esperanzas de que se nos uh, conceda de nuevo esa equivalencia. ¿De acuerdo? O sea, realmente esperamos que así sea, pero ahora mismo está en el aire, porque la escuela tiene que hacer, o sea, los profesores y todas las personas um, que, que forman parte de la comunidad tienen que hacer el esfuerzo de demostrar que tenemos esa, es el nivel que se exige, ¿eh? para que no tengáis que homologar vuestros títulos cuando vais, cuando, cuando vais a ir. Esperemos que, que, que todo salga bien. ¿eh? ¿De acuerdo? Es un rollo esa homologación. Yo pasé por ella y es un es una parte que cuesta dinero. Eh, es un proceso... Un poco... Claro, bueno, por eso, las, por eso la escuela ha hecho un enorme esfuerzo, pero ese esfuerzo tiene que te piden que lo renueves. Es decir, no, 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 no lo consigues forever and ever. Amen. Sino que ellos piden que, que demuestres que, 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 tienes, que sigues teniendo ese nivel. ¿Mm? Eso. Esperemos que así sea. Sí, seguro que sí. No sé si te he contestado, Car creo que era Carlota la que hablaba. No, María José, pero sí, ah, gracias. No. María José, perdona. Gracias, Patricia. Ok, ¿hay okay, any, any eh, eh, more Sí, questions? yo quería preguntar. Ah, eh, eh, ¿Vuestro programa, o sea, eh, cobráis algo por ello o es simplemente... Es, no, es... Patricia, Patricia ha hecho trabajo gratis. Sí, claro, lo entiendo. O sea, ella trabaja gratis. Eh, es no, igual, igual. Ella es millonaria. No, 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 no lo había dicho. Ella es millonaria y trabaja gratis. No, no. Es que se aburre. Entiendo. A ver, Carlota, por favor. Entiendo, ver. entiendo. O sea, hay una pregunta de... Que, que se necesita... O sea, que si solo eh, apuntarte, pues ya te cobran, tal. O sea... No, por apuntarte no, no se te cobra nada, por eso he dicho, el registro es completamente gratuito. Luego, evidentemente, en función de eh, los pasos a los que llegues, pues hay una serie de fees asociadas eh, cuando se requiere de personal humano que, que participe de ello. O sea, información y demás es completamente gratuita. Pero, por ejemplo, pues eh, cuando registráis y vais a subir el portfolio y el, el currículum y demás, si queréis que sea revisado por el comité de selección y que se os envíe pues, eh, eh, no solo el feedback, sino pues, eso, algunas recomendaciones y demás, creo que son es algo como muy simbólico, no sé si son 30 dólares, 25 euros o algo así. Eh, pero luego, evidentemente, el grosso del programa, que es eh, eh, irte, o sea, buscarte el trabajo y conseguirte el visado, pues eso nosotros lo tenemos, como ya te digo, como en pasos. O sea, una vez que has hecho el registro y te has enviado currículum y portfolio, que eso cuesta 30 dólares. Eh, si quieres, una vez que ya tienes el feedback, si quieres realmente acceder y que empecemos a buscarte procesos de selección, eh, cerrarte entrevistas y demás, eso tiene otro coste. La verdad que yo de los costes no estoy muy puesta. No sé si son como 300 euros o algo así, pero en concepto de depósito, que luego se te descuentan del coste total. 
es la forma que hemos encontrado más óptima para asegurarnos que efectivamente estéis comprometidos con quereros ir y no queréis simplemente que os mandemos empresas y organicemos entrevistas sin estar realmente en ese punto de... Y luego, una vez que... Esto os, esto os llega todo eh, cuando registráis de forma gratuita, ¿vale? Eh, yo te digo porque no me sé los, los costes en concreto, pero luego ya si eh, realmente os encontramos una oferta... O sea, primero, os mandamos proceso de selección. Tú decides si quieres participar en ese proceso o no. Oye, me encanta esta empresa. Sí, vale, pues organizamos una entrevista. Bueno, primero mandamos los, eh, tu portfolio y currículum y demás a la empresa. Si la empresa te preselecciona, pues como pasa en la vida real, te preselecciona para una entrevista, organizamos la entrevista y si luego eh, resultas eh, seleccionada, pues ahí es cuando se te cobraría el coste del visado y demás. Pero no antes, evidentemente, hasta que no tienes la oferta encima de la mesa no se te cobra. Y se te descuenta de ese coste lo que has pagado inicialmente. Vale, gracias. Nada. Me encantaría ser un ONG, de verdad, pero es que no, no, no por ahora no. No, no, o sea que, es que como, obviamente que sabía que no la hacíais gratis, pero digo, que ya saber pues de, a partir de dónde... ¿En qué punto? No, no, por eso te digo que me parece buena pregunta, claro que sí, claro que sí. Y luego tenemos iniciativas como la que os he comentado brevemente antes de eh, la beca con, con Arkea, que por ejemplo, pues ahí nosotros no nos, no nos llevamos nada, ¿no? Pero bueno, es una colaboración ¿Puedes, muy puedes concreta. Dar, ¿Puedes darles información acerca de cómo eh, solicitar esa beca? La pues beca la beca Arkea, que la vamos a repetir, eh, o sea, los chicos se iban a haber empezado en septiembre, pero con todo este follón de la pandemia y tal, pues se ha pospuesto para que empiecen en, en enero, creo que es. Pero básicamente la beca para el año que viene, 2021, abre, pues no sé si es en enero. De todas maneras, si os registréis en nuestro programa vais a estar, que lo vuelvo a repetir gratis, eh, vais a estar en nuestra base de datos, entonces os podemos informar eh, entre otras muchas cosas, eh, de esto, por ejemplo, de, de cuándo se vuelven a abrir las, las becas. De todas maneras, también podéis estar un poco pendientes de información en nuestro blog, eh, en nuestro Instagram, también intentamos, tenemos iniciativas muy interesantes como el Portfolio Challenge, que os puede eh, venir bien para tener referencias de, de cómo presentan otros, otros eh, arquitectos su trabajo. Y eso lo hacemos, hacemos dos, dos publicaciones a la semana, martes y jueves, y el Portfolio Challenge es algo que hacemos mensual. Entonces, bueno, el, el que tiene más likes, pues le damos un Amazon gift card y sobre todo eh, divulgar su trabajo en un post dedicado en nuestro blog. O sea, bueno, al final, eso es a lo que más nos hemos dedicado durante estos meses que por desgracia hemos estado paralizados en cuanto a poder mandar a la gente a trabajar, pero bueno, eh, damos todo el soporte que está en nuestras manos de forma gratuita y vamos, por compartir eh, nuestro conocimiento en la industria y apoyar a, a los jóvenes talentos, pues lo, lo hacemos. A través de eso, de redes, blog y demás. Entonces os invito a que os registréis porque es la forma de estar un poco enterados. No sé si hay alguien más por ahí que tenga alguna duda. Yo quería preguntarte sobre una opinión personal ya tuya sobre cómo ves la situación actual laboral debido al, al coronavirus. ¿Ves mejor opción irte a América a trabajar que quedarte en Europa o...? A ver, yo la verdad que de Europa ahora mismo estoy un poco fuera, eh, me refiero, no sé muy bien eh, la realidad del día a día, o sea, sé que evidentemente no en nuestra industria, sino en general, pues todo se ha visto muy paralizado, pero también es verdad que han salido otro tipo de oportunidades que están ahí, entonces, eh, independientemente de la pandemia y demás, mi recomendación es que es lo que, bueno, lo que yo siempre tuve claro que quería hacer y lo que a mí también me ha, me ha funcionado, ¿no? Es que para trabajar aquí siempre tienes tiempo. Para irte a Londres, bueno, ahora con el Brexit igual también las cosas cambian, pero me refiero que tú puedes pack your bags e irte a Suiza mañana y buscarte la vida y acabas encontrando. Pero, pero irte... no al revés, ¿verdad? ¿Perdón? Te digo que, pero que cuando, es, cuando eres más mayor todo es mucho más complicado. Es mucho más joven marcharte al extranjero. Sí. Eh, marcharte al extranjero con, ahora. Sí. Y luego, si quieres, hacer como Patricia y volver a casa. 
Sí, vamos, yo sin lugar a dudas te lo recomiendo porque no todo el mundo se va, no todo el mundo se puede ir, no, no todo el mundo tiene, yo qué no sé, el arranque o las capacidades, eh, vosotros tenéis ya el idioma, eh, eso siempre va a sumar y te va a poner a alguien, si te ponen a la par a alguien de tu misma edad, tu misma trayectoria, es que ya estás, eh, no sé cuántos pasos por encima, aparte de lo que eso te va a aportar a nivel personal, ¿sabes? El enfrentarte a... A, a, a un reto profesional en otro país pues eh, eh, tiene su aquel no entonces te va a dar una cantidad de herramientas que luego vuelves a casa y eres como un gladiador <risa> o sea, me refiero eh, eh, co coges un montón de, de bagaje vital es que no solo profesional es como, como, como persona ¿no? que, que te va a ayudar eh, en todo y desde el punto de vista profesional del puro currículum, evidentemente no es lo mismo a ver, o sea, nosotros tenemos a esta gente que os comento, a estos participantes que os comento que salían de la escuela, es que además están en las mejores, o sea, el que mandamos a OMA, este chico me acuerdo que le entregamos un panfleto el día que entregaba, era de, me imagino que de los últimos de PCC de, del plan 96, de la, en cual estaba yo, pero no había trabajado en su vida, bueno, pues se ha quedado. Se ha quedado y está en Oma, en Nueva York, ahí eh, cortando la pana, como quien dice. O sea, se fue con unas prácticas de un año y como es muy bueno, pues se lo han quedado. O sea, se lo han quedado relativamente un tiempo, me refiero, pero ha conseguido otro visado y lleva ya allí tres o cuatro años. Y así, de esos, tenemos un montonazo de casos. O sea, que podéis eh, o bien tomarle el pulso y, y eso, tener una experiencia puntual de unos meses, un año, o podéis decir, jolín, pues eh, quiero quedar un, un tiempecito y luego volver o moverme a otro país. Y, y, y de verdad que lo que os va a aportar mmm, tiene un valor incalculable. O sea que sí, que te recomendaría que te fueras a, 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 a conocer el mundo, sin lugar a dudas. Vale, gracias. <ríe> Nada. Bueno, ¿hay alguna otra pregunta? O si no, eh, si no hay ninguna otra pregunta, eh, me gustaría continuar con la corrección de currículum. No sé quién estaba esta tarde. Me parece que era el grupo de Ixtino, ¿no? No Ixtino, pero gente de su grupo. Eh, Ana María, eh, mi grupo, eh, María. soy María Cantalejo, mi grupo teníamos hoy a las cuatro y media. Eh, ¿Estáis ahí? ¿Podemos mirarlo en un momento? Yo entonces me, me despido en este punto, Ana, ¿te parece? Eh, yo creo que sí, Patricia. Eh, Pero, ah. Mira, les has, como siempre, muchísimas gracias por estar aquí. Oh, eh, yo estuve dos años en Estados Unidos ¿eh? cuando terminé el, la segunda carrera y estuve a punto de quedarme allí, me volví de casualidad, no sé, una serie de circunstancias, pero me, me, me pareció una experiencia alucinante, inolvidable, estoy absolutamente de acuerdo con lo que tú dices, Patricia, si piensas irte el momento es ahora, no después, y, y bueno, eh, yo estoy encantada que, con que tú les presentes esta oportunidad porque es algo en lo que yo creo, creo firmemente. Entonces, eh, muchísimas gracias. No, un placer. Si ellos, si, ellos quieren, si ellos quieren, espero que ellos se registren, espero que estén al tanto de, de la información que les mandéis. Y siempre pueden contactar contigo a través de, de, esta, de este link que nos has mandado. Sí, os he dejado también mi, mi mail personal por si quisierais, pero sería genial si, si me podéis pasar, no sé si alguien es un delegado o tenéis la capacidad de pasarme vuestro, vuestro correo por si esto luego se pierde del chat, poderos mandar la información y la presentación para, para que la tengáis. En cualquier caso, estoy a vuestro yo tengo todos Yo tengo todos los correos, eh, Patricia. Eh, voy a hacer una consulta por grupos, porque he dividido sí. la clase en grupos, y les voy a, les voy a consultar quién quiere, quién quiere que... Les mande la presentación. Que le, que le mande, que le mande... ¿De acuerdo? Por supuesto, ¿Eh? sí, 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 quien esté interesado, claro, sin, sin, sin ningún compromiso. Genial. Pues millones de gracias por invitarme, Ana. Ya me contarás qué tal te fue la experiencia. Eh, ya me contarás. Pues ya sabes que muy triste. Porque me fui a Boston en enero y tuve que volverme. 
Con lo que te costó, madre mía. Con lo que me costó irme, Dios mío, hasta que me dieron la beca UPM. ¿eh? Me dieron la beca UPM para uh, profesores um, que queríamos irnos a, a Norteamérica, eh, pues contactar con Smith College en Boston y todas las cosas. Me costó, fue realmente complicado porque además estaba la administración Trump y la administración Trump no, mmm, no recibía muy bien a hispanos como, como nosotros. Sí, sí. Así es que después de vencer todas esas dificultades, llegar a Smith College, Boston, pues me tuve que volver a un poco, un poco un, nada, a los dos meses. Joder. Bueno, ¿y no la puedes retomar? ¿No la podrás retomar? Me, te, me, temo que, me, me temo que no. Bueno, ya se andará, ya se andará, pero no creo. Ya, 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 ya hablaremos. Sí. ¿eh? Espero hablar contigo ¿eh? en, en, privadamente. Sí, 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 sí. Patricia quieras. va a tener su segundo hijo. ¿eh? Sí. Así es que, que le deseo como, paz, como, madre, de como, madre, como madre que soy, como madre que soy, te deseo toda la suerte del mundo, ya lo sabes. La, la voy a necesitar, gracias. Sí, sí, eres, eres una jabata, eres una luchadora. ¿eh? Yo creo que tienes dos hijos porque te has ido a Estados Unidos, si no, no los tendrías. Sí, no tengo, es igual. <risa> pues igual, pues nada. Es este más algo complicado hoy día. Bueno. Muchísimas pues nada, gracias, de verdad. Venga, Cualquier cosa estoy a vuestra disposición. Un abrazo. Muchas gracias. 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 gracias.